agenda for today. We are going to learn countries and languages. We are going to start with German yes, case. Yes. First case in German grammar. That's our first case. Okay. Agenda for today. We see these are the countries and above we can see the languages. Here I can see the countries and at the top, what can I see? I can see the languages. Land, land is Sprache, land, Sprache, land is country, Sprache is language, country, language, and article is, this is das land, das, das land, und Die Sprache. Das Land und die Sprache. Okay. So Land is country. Sprache is language. Deutsch is land. Deutschland is German. Uh, this is Germany. Sprache is Deutsch. So what is Deutschland? Germany. How do we pronounce it? How do we pronounce it? Deutschland. 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 Sprache. Deutschland. Sprache. Deutschland. Sprache. Correct. And Deutsch. Deutsch, Deutsch. is? Deutsch. Deutschland. Deutsch. Österreich. Österreich is Austria. Österreich. 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 Not Ester. Österreich. Österreich. Okay, there's an activity which everyone has to do. Say O. O. And Sartak, no, we have performed it, right? We yeah. have done it, Sartak. O. When we say O, we have to hold our cheek. O. 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 And isko aise rakhna hai. Keep it like this and then say E. E. O. 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 Correct. O. When you say, when you try to say E by holding your cheeks inside and say O. O. E. E. O. 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 Say now. जब आप O बोलते हो, O बोल के आपको ऐसे ही रखना है और E बोलना है. O. Osterich. 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 Correct. It will take time. Osterich. 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 Österreich. What languages people speak in Österreich? Deutsch. In Austria, also hmm. people speak Deutsch. Hmm. Deutsch. Die Schweiz. Die Schweiz. Die Schweiz. Schweiz correct. Schweiz is Switzerland. Switzerland, Schweiz. 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 Which languages people speak in Schweiz? Französisch, Italianisch, Französisch, Rätoromanisch, Rätoromanisch, Französisch, Französisch, Italianisch, 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 Französisch, Rätoromanisch. 
Reto Romanish. And what is, blank? Yeah. what is this blank? We say Deutsch. Okay. Deutsch. Deutsch. Deutschland, Deutsch. Österreich, Deutsch. Die Schweiz, Deutsch. Deutsch. Französisch, Italienisch, Reto Romanisch. Okay. I give you two minutes of time. Just guess what is missing. If the language is given, country is missing, country is given, language is missing. Mm -hmm. We have to fill these words, these blanks, using the words above. Two minutes only. Please go ahead. Done, everyone? Yes, sir. Ah. So what is Gross Britannian? English. Britain. <laughs> Correct. How do we pronounce it? Gross Britannian. Gross Britannian. Gross Britannian. Yeah. Okay, next. Italian. Italianish. Italian, okay. Italianish. Correct. Spanian, Spanish. Mm -hmm. Spanian, Spanish, correct. Poland. Polish. Poland, Polish. Polish. Turkai, Turkish. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Turkai, Turkish, correct? Flan Rusic. Ruslan. Ruslan. Uh, Manoj, what do we call France? Mm. France, you say. Frank Rice. Italian is which country? Italy. Italian, Italy. Correct. Spanian, Spanish. What is Polish? Which country? Poland. 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 Correct. The Turkai, Turkish. Turkai, Turkish. Ruslan, Rus. Correct. Egyptian, Egyptian, Arabic. Uh -huh. Ye, ye umlaut is pronounced as ye. Egyptian. 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 Yeah. Egyptian. Arabic. Arabish. 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 Japan, yeah. Japan, Japanish, Japanish. D U S A English. D U S A D U S A English. English, correct. If we go to page seventy-six of the Arbeit's book, uh, this this exercise one 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 two two. What is Portugal? Portugal. Portuguese. 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 Sweden. 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 Swedish. 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 Poland. Polish. 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 Mexico. Mexico. No. Mexico. Maori. No. Spanish. Spanish. Ah, uh, yeah. Canada. English. 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 France. Uh. In Canada, it is French, which is one of the official language. Okay. okay. Thailand. Maori. Thai. Thai. Yeah. Thai. Thai. Okay. Uh, it is present. <laughs> Ireland. Irish. 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 Correct. Irish. Right. Irish. Not Irish. Irish. Right. Right. Zurian. Arabish. Arabish. Zurian. It is. Z Zurian. Zurian. 
Grecian land. Gracious. Gracious. Noise land. Maori. Maori. They you they they speak Maori. Maori is the official language of New Zealand. Maori. Okay. Very nice. Okay. We have not. Page even... gayab. Sir, page gayab. Dek. Page aajega. Ye lo. Okay. Okay. Um, we go to. This is the map of Germany. Germany map presentation. Okay, go to this. Go to pictures, presentations, and open the map. This here is the map of Germany. Correct. What are the neighbor countries do we have? If you can see, hmm. how many neighbor countries do German does this Germany has? Twenty five, I think. No. Six. 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 Let's find out. Denmark one. Five. Poland. Why? Czech Republic. Three. Austria. Four. Australian, that's a Österreich. Italian, Fun. Schweiz, Six. Six. Frankreich, Sieben, Belgium, Acht. Netherland, Nine. Correct. Holland. Nine neighbor countries. Germany has nine neighbor countries. Nine. And German is spoken in all of these nine. Neighbor countries, but Germany is official language of three more neighbor countries. Official language, which are these? Österreich, official language. Schweiz, official language. Okay, and it is also in par in, in few cities of Netherlands. Okay, official language. It is divided in four parts. So let me just use my uh, mouse to annotate things. This here is Süd Deutschland. We call it Süd Deutschland. Oh, this is ah, uh, Ost. Deutschland. Ost. Ost. Deutschland. This here is West Deutschland. West. Ost. West Deutschland. If I go to this side, this here, this is North. Deutschland. Ost. North Deutschland. And this is Süd. Süd Deutschland. Süd Deutschland. South Germany. North Germany. South Germany. East Germany. West Germany. So if I simply talk about what are the major major countries. In this one, Berlin here is the capital. And what do we call capital? We call Hauptstadt. Hauptstadt. 
capital. How to start? So, capital. How to start? Phone. How to start? How that start? is the. Say again. The how to start? Phone. Deutschland is Berlin. Hauptstadt von Deutschland. Von Deutschland. Okay. Von is off. Okay. Hauptstadt von Deutschland is Berlin. Correct. Is Berlin. Okay. The major cities in North Germany. I'm just going to encircle them. Hamburg. Hamburg. The major attraction where the miniature Wonderland. You have you seen that miniature Wonderland? No, we are going to see that. What exactly this is? Bremen. Bremen. One second, please. Okay. If I go to west side of Germany, west side of Germany, the major attraction here, the big cities are, let me just clear this map. The major cities here are Köln, Bonn, and Dusseldorf. Three cities. And there we have a river by the name of Rhine. Rhine is a river which basically comes from the north side of Germany and it is it merged in the sea in the east side of Germany. So west side of. So we call it this area, we call it North Rhine West Fallen. The west side of Germany is known as North Rhine Westphalen. Very important for you to know. North Rhine Westphalen. The major cities in the west side, if I go to east side, we have Potsdam. We have Potsdam. We have Leipzig, Dresden, completely east side, Erfurt. These are the west side of. Westphalen. If I go to the south side of Germany, what are the major cities we have in south side? We can see correct. We have Stuttgart, München, Nuremberg, Heidelberg, where we have the world's biggest university, University of Heidelberg, the most famous university. Okay. Freiburg is another one. Karlsruhe. Say again. Karlsruhe. Karlsruhe, correct. We have this Karlsruhe, this one. And it is also it also has a very big IT university, University of Karlsruhe, KIT we call. And Kasturi, which part of Germany you were in? I was in Baden-Württemberg state. near Baden to Freiburg. Yeah, yeah. Near from Freiburg here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Salzburg. Okay. And Sartak, which which city Pinkel is in? Yeah, okay. You know, this 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 part of Germany, south part is extremely costly. In comparison to the north side of Germany, South Germany is the most costly area. Because the south side of Germany is basically, it belongs to the kings. All of the kings which happened to be, they all were from the south Germany. Expensive, Yani. If you go to, uh, if you are living in Berlin, which is the north uh, east, okay, and the flat you can get on rent is 250 euros. The same flat, if you if you buy or take rent in South Germany, it will cost you around 500 or 600 euros. This area, this much difference. It is an expensive place. Okay. Let's talk about few interesting part of Germany. Let me know if you are feeling bored. Of 
So I am just going to play two videos for you today. One miniature Wunderland, which is the biggest attraction in Germany. And this is basically uh, a place where everything is mini. They have mini airport. They, it's a model. They have mini airport. They have mini railway station. They have mini uh, fire brigade. They have mini flights, everything. Okay, just watch it and enjoy. Yeah, no. For 10 years now, the world's largest model railway can be found in Hamburg's historic warehouse district, a mammoth miniature project. It took 500,000 working hours to create this incredible miniature world on 1,300 square meters. The city's most popular tourist attraction fascinates over 1 million people a year, and it's continually growing. Eight different sections connected by 13 kilometers of track installation provide an unforgettable experience for all ages. Tons of steel, wood and plaster form the foundation of this extraordinary exhibition. The journey leads through Scandinavia to Germany, from Austria to Switzerland, and far away to America in just a few moments. Each day, 900 trains with 12,000 wagons travel a distance of several hundred kilometers. The longest train is 14.51 meters long. On the Northeast Sea, with a water capacity of 30,000 liters, large and small ships are cruising. In Scandinavia, America, at the airport, and in the cozy fictional town of Knuffingen, 250 computer-controlled vehicles are on the move. Special attractions are the fire runs, controlled by a sophisticated software. The fire brigades are constantly engaged in firefighting procedures, but the police are also busy tracking down traffic offenders. The newest attraction of the miniature wonderland is the Knuffingen Airport. After six years of development and a cost of three and a half million euro, the world's probably smallest commercial airport opened in May 2011. On 150 square meters with more than 40 airplanes and the ground stuff that goes with it, it may be the world's most advanced flight simulation. From the technology hunger to the air terminal, every little detail has been faithfully recreated. Without a doubt, the attention to detail is at the heart of the layout. Over 200,000 figures show life in all its facets. It's a world where the law chases criminals and where some don't really care. Where the fire department puts out a large fire and a new fire starts not too far away. Funeral oration or celebration. Eat or be eaten. Travelers from this or another world. Imagination knows no bounds in the Wonderland. There are fire breathers, traveling animals, and surprisingly strong girls. In a world alternating between hectic and peaceful, between wild animals and some that were already tamed, there are hunters and some just hunting for the best pictures. There are holy sanctuaries and some not quite so holy. There are people bursting with life, and some not so much. The Wonderland is absolutely diverse and unique. Travel from the highest mountain with over six meters, over dreamy streets to the Grand Canyon, snow-covered landscapes, through idyllic villages, to below the surface of the earth. In the miniature Wonderland, a day lasts 15 minutes. At dusk, over 300,000 LEDs ensure that the layout shines in a captivating light. Then, the nightlife of the various regions really becomes visible. And amidst all this, more hidden stories emerge at the push of a button. There are over 200 push-button actions spread across the edge of the layout, where the visitors can actively participate in various forms. For example, in a sweet way at the chocolate factory, or in the daily struggle with the pitfall of technology, or in the creation of life, or with a bit too much craftsmanship. The technology behind it all is monitored by human eyes from a control console and with the help of more than 40 computers. These are controlled by a complex self-developed software. The miniature wonderland is internationally well known through more than 1,000 TV reports, and the 260 people on the Wonderland team are never short on new ideas. 
Until 2020, there will be new sections covering France, Italy, England and parts of Africa, and who knows what's next. But there's no end in sight. To convey this marvel in five minutes? Impossible. Just come by and see for yourself. You will be amazed. So how interesting this is, right? Mm. Mm. So this is Germany. This is just one inside of Germany. And I we wanted are, to move abroad. Yeah, exactly. This is based the at IELTS. the IELTS tutors on Cambly are very experienced. I would do mock speaking sessions with them. Where exactly and they would it is give based me at? Berlin. No. No. As I said, it's Hamburg, north side. The north side of Germany. Where is the Hamburg? This side of Germany. It's in Hamburg, miniature Wonderland. Another attraction of Germany is tropical island. If you ever heard about a tropical island, this is, uh, you can say, the masterpiece of Germany. It's a city. It's a city designed in a balloon. And in this balloon, it is that much big, right? You can, uh, in that balloon, basically, eight football stadiums can fit in. Think, think of the size of one football stadium, how big it is. And how big that balloon could be if eight football stadiums are there. This is the dimension. The length of this balloon is one F Eiffel Tower. If you just, you know, place that Eiffel Tower in that balloon this much long it is and the height is one statue of liberty can stand just think of the size and in this balloon you have everything you can think of virtual jungle smart beach we have these paragliders going in right we are going to watch the last clip for the day second last ideally second last clip for the day which is talking about tropical island and it is another biggest attraction of Germany based in Schleppfisch. There is a there is a village called Schleppfisch near from Berlin. So we are go just going to Nestled in the middle of the forest in Germany, you will find one of the world's largest buildings, an aircraft hangar that used to house blimps, but now houses a tropical oasis theme park by the name of Tropical Islands Resort. The resort is actually located on the site of a former Soviet military airbase in Krosny, Germany, inside a hangar built originally to house Zeppelin airships designed to haul long-distance cargo. This gargantuan hangar is huge and is the biggest freestanding in the world. It is 1,180 feet long, 689 feet wide and 351 feet tall. To put that into perspective, you can fit inside eight football fields and the Statue of Liberty or you could slide the Eiffel Tower in on its side. The man-made paradise is now a getaway of choice for German and Polish families who want to experience a rainforest atmosphere in Central Europe. The theme park is split into four sections, the tropical village, the rainforest, the tropical sea and the Bali Lagoon. The rainforest is said to be the biggest indoor rainforest replica in the world and is home to 50,000 plants of 600 different species, plus various exotic birds, turtles and fish. There is also a 3,000 square metre sea with a 200 metre long beach that stretches along its shoreline. The park is also covered with a large number of whirlpools, jacuzzis, water slides, pools, a waterfall, as well as Germany's tallest slide at 27 metres. There are also 13 different restaurants, bars and lounges, a mini golf course, and there are even tethered balloon rides that soar above the tropical forest where birds fly free. There are three accommodation options within the giant dome, from rooms and lodges to tents in the Adventure Rainforest Camp. There is also a campsite outside the dome, as well as mobile homes and holiday homes. The hangar 
has year-round heating with a constant air temperature of 26 degrees Celsius and a humidity of 60%. The water temperature of the lagoon is 32 degrees and the sea is 28 degrees. Regardless of the weather outside the hangar, guests will always enjoy a temperature of 26 degrees. Needless to say, it's all lush, green and sweaty, with inspiration taken from locations like Bali, Thailand and Fiji. The resort has been open since 2004 and attracts over 6,000 visitors a day, and over 1.1 million people visited in 2017. Well, you know what they say, if you can't bring people to Fiji, bring Fiji to the people. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Manoj, I think you are on mute. Now, we how was it? Hear you. How was yeah, it? That was amazing. Interesting. It was amazing. And this is this is located near Potsdam, here, the tropical island. Right. And it is, I mean, why I'm showing this to you, because whenever you go to Germany, you, you need to know where to go, what to see, where to take your families to, and so on and so forth. Without having this knowledge, it is very difficult for us to, you know, find out our good time places. Right. The last but not the least video for the day, we are now going to the west side of Germany. This was, there were two things, north side of Germany, Hamburg. What did we have? Miniature Wonderland. Wonderland. Mm. We go to completely east side of Germany. We have one attraction, Tropical Island. Now we are mm. going to experience the west side of Germany. In west side of Germany, what people celebrate, they celebrate one, one very beautiful festival, which is Carnival. Carnival. I don't know whether, Kasturi, you have witnessed it or not, but I used to go to this Carnival almost yeah, every day. I did visit that and it was continuously for one week and people dress up the they want the way they want and then it's really awesome. Um yeah. So much of fun. You no, know, it is that much awesome. The first time I visited Germany was 2011. And it was my luck that I landed up in Cologne, that Köln, the completely east side. You remember the three cities? <laughs> I just uh, highlighted, if I go to the east side, these are the three cities. Köln, Bonn, Dusseldorf. Köln is one of the biggest city in Germany. And this Cologne, it has one of the biggest church in the world. Not one of the biggest church. It's the biggest church in the world is in Cologne. It took 325 years to build that church. 325 years. You think how beautiful that church could be. Whenever you go to Germany, this should be your first stop. Visit uh, uh, Cologne Cathedral once in your, in, in your life. Now in this festival, if we talk about, this festival starts with uh, Wednesday, which we call Asher Mitwok. Asher Mitwok. Asher is ash. Ashes. Right when when somebody dies, he or she is converted to the ashes. That's called Asher. Asher Mitbok, the Ash Wednesday. Why people call it Ash Wednesday? Because they believe this day the God is going to sleep and devil is coming up. So everybody, everything is going to be converted to the ashes. People are going to die. So they dress up like they celebrate have the same principle with Halloween. People dress up, dress up, you know, funny costumes. They we are funny costumes. They pretend, pretend to be, you know, it's the mankind coming uh, coming out. And it's it gets over on Monday, which we call Rosen Montag, where they believe the God is now awake and devil is gone. That is the day when people celebrate like, and the whole city, not even one one person stays home, not even one person. The whole city celebrates that. It's not in India, if we have Diwali, one neighbor is celebrating, one is not, second is celebrating, third is not. Patako said that, that, that crackers, they disturb, no. And everywhere, it is peace, no crime. 
no crime you are allowed to drink on streets look at the discipline and the you know uh, what do we say uh, cultural aspect of the countries the country citizens they do not destroy anything they don't harm anything they are allowed to drink on street they just booze a lot everywhere day and night there are no policemen no policemen no girl is harassed nobody is disturbed their lifestyle is maintained they enjoy i was amazed to see that no policemen in india i mean if we are having that that alcohol on street and with the eight or 10 people get around i mean only god can save us especially when we are punjabis <laughs> <laughs> only god can save us right so we are we are going to watch this clip from rosen montag just a five three minutes clip you just see how beautifully they celebrate this one i think we have seen this clip before mm, yeah so, yeah i remember yes we did we have seen last time we have seen right yes yes when when nobody was here yeah this is how they celebrate so in case you want to watch it again i can play this again or else i can move to the next topic so you can play sir we can skip i mean you can watch it just type on youtube rosen montag film whenever yeah. you have time just watch this one rosen montag film there are two films i mean this one and this one anything you can watch okay so i'll start with the next topic which we planned for today countries nine neighbor countries which are denmark poland schweiz österreich italian frankreich belgium netherland nine countries can we just recall them schweiz Österreich, Belgium, Frankreich, Denmark, Belgium, Denmark, Poland, Poland, Italy. Italian, and Czech, Czech Republic. Czech Republic. and one more there is one more netherland and when i say neighbor countries there is one visa which is allotted when you go to germany called schengen visa if you are a schengen visa holder you do not need any other visa to travel to these nine countries we do not need any special visa to travel to these nine countries if you are a schengen visa holder but if you travel to any of these countries you need a special visa to travel to germany that's completely different okay schengen visa I always try for schengen <coughs> schengen visa okay all right now let us now start with our first case in german grammar we call it nominative our first case is called nominative nominative when we take when we talk about nominative nominative sentences are those sentences which have which have one subject one verb one verb and information related to the subject for example for example i am manoj in this sentence i is the subject am is the verb and manoj is the information related to the subject very important all those sentences which have just one subject verb and information no object say now the verb which are nominative verb used here are only sein 
and heisen. The verb which you did last time, ish bin, ish heise. Only these two verbs, whenever we use these two verbs, sentence is going to be nominative and there are no exceptions. Whenever I am using these two verbs, sein and heisen, my sentence will be nominative. Okay. In these sentences, we have one noun or one pronoun. These sentences, we have one noun or one pronoun. Two things will not be there. Either it is a noun or it is going to be a pronoun. Okay. Hmm. For example, Ish bin uh, Harmeet. Ish bin eine Hausfrau. Ich bin eine Lehrerin. What are these? These are my nominative sentences. Why the understanding of nominative and accusative is important? Why it is important? Because when we apply the articles, the rules, we have to put correct articles, correct pronoun, everything according to the cases. We have four cases. This is our first case. And trust me, it is looking very easy when we are looking at the screen. But when we actually practice it or implement it, it becomes more difficult. So initially, what is expected out of you is to ask as many questions as possible. Ich bin eine Hausfrau. Ich bin eine Lehrerin. Ich bin Harmit. Whenever I use this Zain or Heisen verb. And you remember, we have done this Zain Heisen last time. Zain Heisen. Ich heise. Correct. These are the, all of these sentences are nominative sentences. All these questions are nominative questions. All these sentences, whatever you ask, question, uh, bis du, bis du harmit, bis du kasturi, bis du uh, danish, and so on. Okay? So these are my nominative sentences. Let's talk about nominative personal pronoun. First thing we talk about nominative personal pronoun. What do you think nominative personal pronouns could be? Any guesses? Ish, ish, do. Right. Absolutely. Ish, do, er, z, s, via, ia, z, z. Whenever we use these pronouns, my sentence is always nominative and there is no exception. What was the discussion? I was asking what is the meaning of Ish bin Aine Leherin. I am a teacher. A teacher. Aine is a. We, we have this A N form. We have this A N form which is a. Aine. If it is, we will talk about this in in articles going forward, hmm. step by step. Okay. okay. Right now, it is understand. It is important to understand the cases. Okay, sir. Okay. Now the next okay. information is, who is always nominative? Who I should say, the doer. The doer is always considered as a subject and is always nominative. Who? Whosoever is doing the verb is nominative. Anushka is writing a letter. Who is writing a letter? Anushka. Anushka is nominative. So we will use she. Z. Praveen is listening to me. Who is listening? Praveen. Nominative. Please make sure the subject will always be nominative. It will not be accusative. No. Never. So whatever we write as a subject is going to be either these one or the names. 
He is calling you. Hmm. What is my nominative? He. 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 R. 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 She yeah. is. She is Rita. Z. 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 Correct. Right. Um. He is throwing a ball. R. 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 Perfect. This understanding is very important. The moment you are through, do you are clear with this concept? Your next step is going to be more easier for you. Please make sure subject is always going to be nominative, no exception. And what can come as a subject? Either it's a person, or either it's a person and person as a name or the pronoun, or it can be an object. The house is big. What is nominative part? The house. Correct. The house. The house. The house. The, house. the car is very costly. The car. What is that? The, the car. The car. The car. The car. So a subject can be a person. It can be an object, but it will be nominative. Whatever is doing the verb is nominative. Another thing, we are only going to use only two verbs, Zain and Hyson, as nominative verbs. Most important thing to understand. The next step, we move on to the articles, which is again your life with German starts today. You will curse me for this moment. You'll always say, hey, Why did I learn German? Who made me learn German? Yeah. Articles. In English, how many articles do we have? We have only the and a. a, a. And. Correct. Session is going to be over in 10 minutes and this is the last part of the day. Correct. In German, we are so unlucky that we have three further classification. Our articles are divided into masculine, feminine, Neutral. The concept is same like English. Mera bhai, meri bahan. Masculine, feminine. In Sanskrit. Hindi. Correct, Praveen? Hmm. Do, you think, do you think you are not connected to the course? Sir, uh, I could understand. You can understand. Very good. Okay. Sartak, you have already covered this part. Yeah. Okay. These articles are further divided into two parts. Bestimmt on bestimmt. Which are known as definite and indefinite. Definite, indefinite. So what are definite? My bestimmt means Bestimmt means the articles which are referring to the. And unbestimmt means the article which are referring to a. Bestimmt articles means the article which refers to the. And unbestimmt are the articles which are referring to a n. So in German, there is no a n. There is only one, which is ein or eine. If it is masculine or neutral, it is going to be ein or eine. If it is feminine, if it's masculine or neutral, it is going to be ein or ein. If it is feminine, it's eine. For example, for Harmit, what did we use? Ich bin eine, eine Haus, because feminine. Hmm. So what are my masculine, masculine, best to definite? There, the Thus, there, the, thus, there, the, thus. This is the last section for the day, and we'll wind up. There, hmm. the, and thus. Indefinite article is if it is masculine, we use ein, feminine, hmm. eine, neutral. Ein. For plural, it is only going to be D, D, D. So 
So let's say I want to say the father. What will I say? Their water. Their father. Their father. Only article. Only article. Because you, you might not know the meaning. Of correct. Their. A uh, car. Das. 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 Okay. Because we do not know. Door. Okay. Door. Das. Das. Here you go. And this is what the, exactly the English principles are. Whatever mm -hmm. living, whatever living beings, divide masculine or feminine. For non-living things, divide neutral. Tell them you are neutral. But in German, we do not work this way. Every noun, be it living being or be it non-living beings, is divided into genders. Every noun, living or non-living. The door belongs to feminine category. House belongs to neutral category. Phone number belongs to feminine category. Phone belongs to neutral category. Board, white board belongs to feminine category. Laptop, masculine. So it will not so be... So are there any tricks to remember? Not right now. In A1, we don't go for tricks. We, because we have a limited vocabulary to learn. We have very limited words to learn. So we will learn these words. Instead of finding out the logic, we will learn it. Logic will work in B1. We can okay? relate to Hindi. Absolutely. But mm -hmm. Hindi, it will not always work. Na? For example, yeah. Hindi, your mej hoti hai. Hmm. We don't say mej hota hai. But in, <laughs> German, hota hai, sir. in German, it is masculine. Are. <laughs> in, in Hindi, choti bachi hoti hai, feminine. Hmm. Yaha par it is neutral, das mädchen. Okay. The principle will work. Like everything has a gender. But not all the time, okay. nouns, you cannot decide. Okay. Mm. So today, what mm. we did is simply we try to have a basic understanding of nominative personal pronouns, nominative mm. articles. That's it. We did not do anything new. Tomorrow, when we start, we will try to do more of articles. We will mm. try to see how we can use articles in nominative. How effectively we can work on that. Any question? This is now the question time. Please ask a question. Who left? Rahul left. Okay. Anushka, please question, Bita ji. Kasturi, question. Sartak, question. Okay, Siddhya, okay. question. Uh, no question, sir. Harmeet ji, question. Praveen, any question? Also. Uh, right now, you know, I have been teaching for more than uh, 12 to 13 years, but this is for the first time when I am handling batch of, you know, multi uh, ling linguistic people, multi linguistic people. One is Hyderabad, Bangalore, Bangalore, Orissa, Meerut, Madhapanagar and Punjab. I mean, it's like, it feels me, it, you know, it makes me feel very, very special. I right, am connected to I am connected to India. Yeah. yeah. Don't and only we are learning. See, we know multiple languages. Mm. Our source of language is English, and we are learning another language. Mm. So cool. Mm. Mm. Okay, we will connect tomorrow at six o'clock. Tuesday and right. Thursday we decided for six thirty, and we'll make it six thirty to eight. Right. We'll make it six thirty to eight. One and a half hour we'll oh. spend. Right, sir. Recordings again will be uploaded on the YouTube perhaps by tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. So if, if Manoj, no I don't have the link for this uh, YouTube. I generally just uh, follow the Lingo Guru channel. Ha, so you don't need to have link for YouTube. I mean, whosoever follows this channel, like mm -hmm. okay, the notification goes to everyone. If you have this channel, so on, on my channel there is a playlist. Uh, don't forget mm -hmm. this one. So this is German for beginners, day one. It was our first lesson. So German for beginners, day two. It is a second lesson. And German for beginners, day three. It is a third lesson. It is to everyone. If you have subscribed this channel, have you pressed this notifications button? No, no. 
So that's what you need to press that. Then only you will get mm. the notification from our channel. Whatever, whenever I upload anything, my audience they get an up, that get an update. Okay, something is coming. Like Anushka called mm -hmm. me every time, sir, your video is very bad. Please delete it. So I had to delete the video multiple times. She give me feedback, continuous feedback. She gives me. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining in. Wish everyone great rest of the evening and a wonderful week ahead. Off we design. Off we design. Cheers. Cheers. Off we design. Cheers. Bye. Bye.